for a long time now, most of the solar and battery experts have said, no, 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 don't get a Tesla solar panel, a power wall as well. The reason being, in particular, Tesla power walls are too expensive. It doesn't make economic sense to get one. If you include the installation cost, it's too expensive. Well, now that the price has come down five successive times, it might be worth considering buying one. And remember, the chemistry of these batteries makes them last longer as well. There isn't warranty on them. You get 10 years warranty. And at the end of that 10 years, Tesla guarantee there'll be a 70% minimum battery percentage left in the battery. If there's not 70%, they'll give you a new power wall. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. And yes, I have agreed with those people who have said batteries don't make economic sense for most people. For some people, they do. Most people, they don't. I'm talking home energy storage here because of the price. But now that the price has come down, like I said so many times, and within the past 24 hours, the price has come down again, you've got to ask yourself the question, is it now a good economic prospect? It doesn't make economic sense right now to go and buy one. Well, that really depends on where you are, how much solar you get. How much, I mean, maybe you're feeding a whole bunch of solar back into the grid and getting paid almost nothing for it. So maybe maybe your electricity rates are high as well. So it makes sense for you to actually get a Powerball battery. How much should they cost now? What am I talking about? Well, first of all, let's have a look at what the price was only a few years ago and then have a look at the successive changes in the price to Tesla's Powerwall. In March of 2022, so just over a year ago, the price for the Powerwall was 13700 That's in Australia. It's Australian dollars. The price then went up in May to 14650 It went up in October to 16500 Then it went down in February 2023 to 14600 And then it went down in April again to 12900 but now Tesla are offering an additional $750 discount. So basically the price is now around 12,000 Australian dollars. If you want to get it installed, there's a fair few companies that will install a panel for you for around about $14,000, including that incentive or just under $14,000. I've seen some companies say they'll do it for 14,500, but of course, then you get the extra $750 discount on top of that. So you're looking at about 13,750 Australian dollars now to get Tesla's Powerwall. Now, like I said, the batteries used to be NMC, nickel, manganese, cobalt battery packs, lithium ternary packs. They wouldn't last as long. You're going to get probably twice as many cycles. That could make it economically sensible for you, depending on where you live, depending on how many solar panels you have. You've, I mean, most people now are putting in massive, massive arrays of solar panels. The average now, I believe, is around 10 kilowatt of panels. Now, if you've got a system that big, you're going to be getting a lot of excess energy on sunny days during the middle of the day between, say, 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock. And it's unlikely you're going to be using all that energy at that period of time in the day. For those people, the power wall could make a lot of sense, especially now that the price is, well, so affordable. When you consider it in context as well, the price has come down when inflation has gone up. So inflation has risen by nearly 10% in Australia over that period of 12 months, but the prices of the battery have come down definitely worth having a look at it at this point in time. So what is the chemistry of a Tesla Powerwall? Well, batteries have a positive cathode, a negative anode, and are separated by an electrolyte in a simple view of a battery. The Tesla Powerwall 2 uses lithium iron technology where the cathodes are made from a compound of lithium, cobalt, nickel, and manganese. Now that was for the previous version and some apparently North American versions, but the Australian version actually uses lithium iron phosphate cells. The battery comes with a 10 year warranty and offers five kilowatt of output power catering to most large residential homes. This would be enough for most homes to run, an air conditioner, a fridge, etc. Now you can of course join multiple batteries together. If you're completely off the grid, you wanna stay completely off the grid, probably will need more than one battery, two or three, depending on how much energy you use. If you've got kids, how big your house is, how hot it is, you know, do you need to run the air conditioner, etc. 
One of the big benefits of Tesla's Powerwall 2 is it can be designed to provide power during a blackout. And if you're in an area where Tesla has the VPP or a virtual power plant, you can be part of that virtual power plant and you can provide energy to the grid in emergencies and then you get paid a fair bit more on that energy you provide to the grid. Some people have been able to pay off their entire systems from being part of a VPP for only a couple of years. So what are the pros and cons of Tesla's Powerwall 2? Well, it's got really good specifications, including 100% depth of discharge. Tesla is a high profile company and they've got a strong warranty. There's an easy to use app and interface. The app is one of the biggest benefits. The quality of the battery packs is another big benefit. I mean, we know from seeing the experiences of many consumers that the Powerwall 2 does last really well. What are the cons? There are some cons. It is a more expensive solution. There's other cheaper options. If you're willing to take a risk, of course, there's Chinese companies that will send you a battery pack from China straight over there and you'll get it cheaper than that. Of course, then you've got to work out how to tie it into your solar panels, get an installer, put it in, and then if you have a warranty issue, it um, wouldn't be covered. So I think it's worth the money. Most people will agree with that. Not everyone does though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now, some people such as solarchoice.net.au say one of the cons of this battery pack is it's not designed for three phase applications as you can only connect the battery to one phase. Now that's actually not true. I'm not sure they've printed that on their website. That's false. You can actually, it costs an extra few hundred dollars. You can make it work for three phase power. Other companies I've confirmed do offer that service. So if you're reading, it's not suitable for you because you have you want to run three phase power. Well, you can actually make it work with three phase. So don't believe that story. Now, what are the specifications? The battery is 13.5 kilowatt hours in size. So essentially you need around five of these batteries to have the same sort of pack size as what you get in a Tesla Model 3. This shows you how big the battery packs are in an electric car. The depth of discharge. One big advantage of the lithium iron phosphate chemistry in a Tesla Powerwall is the fact that they can be discharged to 0% and they can be charged all the way to 100% and it's not going to affect the life of the battery. It won't mean excessive battery degradation, so it will last for a long time. Now, the Tesla app, how does it work? Well, it actually has a few different options. Tesla has developed a mobile app. It's supported on Android and, of course, Apple phones as well. And this enables users to view the real-time operation and performance history of their Powerwall 2, and if applicable, your Tesla EV as well. App users can monitor system performance if combined with solar PV and can switch the battery between three modes, backup only, self-powered, and time-based control. So what are these three modes? What does that mean? Backup only. Switches the battery to store all possible energy and keep the battery full. This means in the event of a blackout, power will continue for the system and can potentially last for weeks if coupled with the solar system. So if you're just using the battery alone, you'll get a few days, maybe a couple of days out of it, if you use only a small amount of power. But if you're actually able to continue to recharge that battery during you know, warm periods in the middle of the day with excess solar, then you'll have to run possibly off grid depending on how long and how much use, how much energy use you actually have in your house. Of course, if you're operating the battery during a blackout, you wanna be really careful about what you actually use in your house. Try not to run air conditioners, etc. Self-powered is option two. This mode maximizes the financial utility of the battery, enabling a household to capitalize on as much free energy from their rooftop prior to drawing any energy from the grid and incurring a cost from your electricity retailer. What this means is you'll save a lot of money on paying electricity fees. Now, you may have to pay a connection fee no matter where you live. It's possible a lot of places operate that way, but you won't have to pay for your electricity usage. This is the common purpose for getting a battery. Homeowners want to basically not have to pay electricity bills. This enables you to do that. So that's option number two. Option number three is time-based control. If you have a time-based electricity charge from your retailer, then the Tesla Powerwall 2 is able to charge only at the off-peak rates and discharge the power at peak rates. So big advantage here, right? You're charging the battery, possibly from the grid, at an off-peak rate, which can be very, very cheap. And then you discharge, as in you send energy back into the grid, 
at peak rates. That's another way to actually make the battery make you some money back. The actual financial benefit depends on tariffs of, the, of your electricity retailer, but it's generally insufficient to actually merit the investment into buying the battery system alone. It depends on where you are. There's some places where it actually makes a lot of sense because you can make a lot of money, but mostly you wouldn't buy the battery pack just for that reason. You'd buy it to be able to use it yourself as well as potentially use it to make money from the grid, from selling energy to the network. So really good to see the price of the Tesla Powerwall 2 come down. There will be a Tesla Powerwall 3 coming out, I would say pretty soon. Could be even better, could be even cheaper potentially. Why would I say that? Well, for one, we know that Tesla is gonna be switching their lithium ion phosphate chemistry cells to LMFP or M3P batteries, which have basically the lithium ion phosphate battery cell, but it has a manganese cathode, manganese doped cathode, meaning they get around five to 10% higher energy density. The prices for Tesla are the same, but Tesla is paying about 20% less on their battery cells than what they were around 12 months ago. So they may pass on even more discounts to you, the consumer. When will that happen? No one knows. It may never happen, but it's actually pretty likely. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.